Molecular Animations of Staphylococcus aureus Host Interaction Robert and Mike went out to explore nature on a mountain. Suddenly Robert falls on a bush with spines and they penetrate his skin, the spine crosses the epidermis and dermis skin layers, and with it also enters many different bacteria. Fibroblasts immediately detect tissue damage and secrete cytokines like IL-33 and IL-25. IL-25 binds with receptors on type 2 innate lymphoid cells or ILC2 and activates them, minutes later they start releasing large amounts of cytokines, like IL-13 that attracts mast cells to the injured site and amphiregulin that induces cell division and tissue repair. ILC specialize in the production of cytokines, so they naturally produce up to 1,000 times more than other cells, amplifying the inflammation process. The interior of a mammal contains high concentrations of nutrients, as well as suitable and stable conditions, but the body is not easy to conquer, all the extracellular fluid is toxic to microbes. Mannose binding proteins immediately attack by binding to the bacteria's lipopolysaccharide layer, then they start hydrolyzing component 4 and component 2 proteins and the complement pathway cascade begins. The bacteria's surface quickly gets covered with component 5B proteins, and each of them binds to other proteins to form a pore protein complex called membrane attack complex and it literally forms holes on the lipid bilayer of pathogens, a powerful molecular attack. The bacteria's proteins, molecules, and ions spill out, destabilizing the intracellular chemical balance they maintain, slowly weakening them until they lose their magical chemical equilibrium and stop living. Mast cells finally arrive at the injured site and are activated by components 5A and IL-33. Activated mast cells secrete large amounts of histamine which binds with receptors on endothelial cells stimulating an increase in blood flow, increased vascular permeability, and increased binding of phagocytes to endothelial cells. Blood plasma leaks out, which contains a high concentration of complement components and immunoglobulins, making it harder for bacteria to keep alive. The complement proteins are very effective at killing bacteria, but one species called Staphylococcus aureus managed to survive. Its success comes from the highly defensive cell wall structure. It only has one lipid bilayer, but a thick peptidoglycan layer and a slimy polysaccharide layer. These two layers make the bacteria almost immune to components 5B. First, it must pass through the polysaccharide layer which it's unlikely, and then manage to pass through the peptidoglycan layer, which it's more improbable, so membrane attack complexes are almost useless. Staphylococcus aureus possesses several proteins anchored to the peptidoglycan layer, some of these cell wall anchored proteins are used to stick to neighboring cells, others to evade the immune system, others to steal nutrients from the body, and others to stick to surfaces. Let's focus on the collagen adhesins proteins, a virulence factor that helps bacteria stick to the host. When adhesins encounter a collagen fiber, they grab to them firmly, in a mechanism called dock, lock, and latch. As we can see Staphylococcus aureus is now attached to collagen fibers in the dermis. The spine is finally removed but Staphylococcus aureus manages to stay inside the body, and quickly begins to form a small colony in the dermis, the complement system wasn't enough to stop them, a stronger attack is needed to eliminate them. Circulating phagocytes like neutrophils and monocytes are stopped by binding to adhesion proteins on activated endothelial cells and are induced to migrate into the surrounding tissue. Phagocytes detect the presence of components 5A and 3A and track their source like a dog following a scent, receptors on the membrane of neutrophils bind to components 5A and 3A and activate metabolic pathways that promote polymerization of actin filaments in the cell, stretching the cell membrane toward a higher concentration of components 5A and 3A, which reveals the source of pathogens activating a large quantity of complement components. When the phagocytes stumble into bacteria, they capture them using membrane proteins that stick to the pathogen molecules. If bacteria have complement components on their membrane, they are even easier to capture by special receptors that bind to them. To eliminate them, phagocytes eat them and enclose them in vesicles named phagosomes, which consequently fuse with other vesicles named granules. The granules contain membrane proteins that lowers the pH to 3.5, 
and produce highly reactive molecules like superoxide, hydrogen peroxide, oxygen radicals, hydroxyl radicals, hypohalite and nitride oxide. Granules also contain several antimicrobial proteins like lysozymes, acid hydrolases and defensins, together these antimicrobial proteins break the bacteria's macromolecules, killing it into pieces. The phagolysosome then fuses with the lysosome, where bacteria's molecules are broken down into even smaller molecules. But the number of bacteria is overwhelming, the neutrophils and monocytes can't manage to eat them all. Neutrophils start using the netosis attack to kill a large amount of bacteria in one blow, they sacrifice and expel their DNA to use it as a net, the DNA contains several enzymes and antimicrobial peptides that breaks down bacteria and kill them. Monocytes start to differentiate into macrophages, this bigger cell can eat a larger amount of bacteria than other phagocyte cells, but can also release cytokines and chemokines that recruit more phagocytes to help in battle, inducing more inflammation in the injured site. Proteins in the macrophages membrane called toll-like receptors bind with bacterial lipoproteins and dimerize to form a protein complex that initiates signaling pathways that activate regulators that induce the expression of cytokines and chemokines proteins. Minutes later macrophages start releasing IL-23, IL-6 and IL-12. Interleukin-23 binds with receptors on type 3 innate lymphoid cells or ILCs3, and activates them, minutes later they start releasing chemokines that only attract neutrophils, and IL-17 and IL-22. Interleukin-17 binds with receptors on fibroblast and endothelial cells, inducing them to produce antimicrobial peptides and chemokines that recruit even more phagocytes to the site of battle. Most bacteria succumb to innate defenses, all but one species. After having adhered to the collagen filaments, the Staphylococcus aureus bacteria began forming a slimy barrier that protects them from all kinds of molecular attacks like complement proteins, degradative enzymes, antimicrobial peptides, immunoglobulins, and it also prevents attachment with phagocyte receptors, inhibiting phagocytosis. The slimy substance, called biofilm is mainly made from polysaccharide polymers that facilitate attachment, named polysaccharide intercellular adhesin or PIA. PIA polymers are synthesized, transported and modified by a complex of four proteins. ICAA and ICAD take molecules of N-acetylglucosamine and synthesized polymers of 20 monomers, which are then transported out of the cell by ICC. ICAC not only transports, but it also covalently attaches several polymers, forming a longer polymers. As the PIA polymers exit the cell, every third or fourth monomer is modified by ICAB, making them positively charged by deacetylation. The positively charged PIA polymers adhere to negatively charged molecules like DNA and matrix proteins, making the biofilm a highly viscous substance that trap molecules, and it's also difficult for neutrophils and macrophages to phagocyte it. Phagocytes can still sense the presence of bacteria by the liposaccharides they release, neutrophils have surrounded the invading colony, and started to slowly phagocyte the biofilm. Some neutrophils resort to a final attack expelling their net, but the biofilm shields the attack. Still, little by little neutrophils eat the biofilm and it's just a matter of time when they will break the biofilm defenses and eat the colony. To further evade the immune system and secure its survival, Staphylococcus aureus has evolved a repertoire of proteins to defend from the immune system. But these proteins are futile when undertaken by a single bacterium acting alone. Rather, success requires population-wide coordination of the individual cells. To orchestrate collective behaviors, bacteria use the cell-to-cell -cell communication process called quorum sensing, and is mediated by the production, release, accumulation and group-wide detection of extracellular signaling molecules called autoinducer peptides or AIP. Staphylococcus aureus are always releasing small amounts of AIP molecules, but when they find themselves densely packed inside the biofilm, the AIP molecules don't dissipate and instead, build up, increasing its concentration around the bacteria cells. 
When AIP concentration reaches a threshold level, AIP receptors in each Staphylococcus cell activate at the same time, synchronizing the colony to behave as one. The metabolism of the entire colony starts to change from benign to virulent. Minutes later the colony starts releasing several virulent factors like chemotaxis inhibiting proteins, alpha toxin, and leukocytins. One of the virulent factors called CHIPS competitively inhibits several receptors including the C5 receptor, turning down the metabolic pathway that regulates actin cytoskeleton formation. Actin filaments start to collapse, and phagocytes are paralyzed without being able to continue fulfilling their role. This molecular attack is highly effective, but it's not the most aggressive. Leukocytins are a group of bicomponent membrane attack proteins that specifically kills leukocyte cells. First, the components classified as S bind to chemokine receptors found on phagocyte cells, then the components classified as F bind to the S components and dimerize. The dimers then bind to the outer surface of the lipid bilayer and serve as scaffolds for other components to bind and form an heptameric ring complex. Consequently, each component begins to unfold a domain through the lipid bilayer until it reaches the inner surface of the lipid bilayer, opening a pore that disrupts the permeability of the cell. And to make matters worse, the pores start to assemble concentrating the leak in one small area. The tables have turned and now phagocytes are the ones being attacked by pores on their membrane. Phagocytes molecules and ions start coming out until they reach chemical equilibrium and die. Some of them rupture by osmotic pressure, and their contents serve as nutrients for the colony to feed. The body seems to have completely lost the battle against Staphylococcus aureus, no attack has been successful, but the body has not lost the war, it still has many more strategies to eliminate the intruders. Meanwhile the bacteria breathe and feed to begin to divide and conquer more territory.